How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at reaction mechanisms and rate laws. So objectives are going to be to determine the rate law for reaction mechanisms with slow first elementary steps, as well as determine the rate law for reaction mechanisms with fast first elementary steps. So let's talk about rate determining steps, and I'll start with an analogy. Let's say you were tasked, you and a team were tasked with painting a picture. Let's say each task, one person is working on it. So one person's getting the paint, another person's getting the brushes, another person's getting all the canvases, and another person person is painting the picture. Well, it's probably that the rate of the production is most likely going to be determined by the person painting the picture. It's probably the slowest step. So it doesn't matter, you know, if people keep bringing more paint and more brushes and more canvases, it's not going to speed up production because the painting of the picture is the rate determining step. It's the slowest one. It can't go any faster than that one step. So when we're talking about reaction mechanisms with different steps, there's going to be a rate determining step, a slow step that's going to determine the rate overall. So if a reaction occurs by elementary steps, these steps may take place at different rates. So one might be faster than the other. The slowest step is going to be the rate determining step because the overall process can only go as fast as that step. So a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. A uh, reaction can only go as fast as its slowest step. So the elementary steps will be described as either being fast or slow, and you'll see it like this, right? So here's a reaction and the elementary steps below, blah, 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 and you can see that they say, hey, this one's slow and this one's fast. So they'll have that kind of notation. In this example, the first step is the rate determining step because it's a slow one. So rate determining steps and rate laws. Slow first step example. For elementary steps, the coefficient becomes the exponents for the rate law expression. And I've underlined this because it is only for elementary steps. It's not for the overall reaction or any of that stuff. For, if you're given an elementary step, then the coefficients become the exponents for the rate law expression. And you got to use the rate determining, excuse me, the rate determining step to figure out the rate law. So if my mechanism is this two-step process, I'm going to have to use that first step because it's a slow one to figure out the rate law expression. So again, rate is going to equal the K times, well here it had a coefficient of 1, so that reactant to the first power. If I had a similar one but I had different coefficients, then my rate law is going to be different as well. In this example, uh, first step again is a slow one, the coefficient in front of that reactant is 2, so it's going to be to the second power. All right, so elementary steps, coefficients become the exponent. Oh, my bad. Here we go. So do a little practice, all right? Try to figure out what the rate law expression would be for this reaction. All right, so what it's going to be is going to be rate equals K times the concentration of NO, which is going to be squared because there's a coefficient of 2 in front of it, times the concentration of BR2 to the first power because there's there's a one there. This is a slow step, so I know I want to use it for my rate law because it's my rate determining step. So this is my rate law expression for that elementary step. So things get a little more complicated when we have reaction mechanisms with a fast initial step. So if this is my overall reaction and my proposed mechanism had a fast first step, that tells me that that second step is going to be my rate determining one. And it's going to be the one that I have to use to figure out my rate law. So initially, you would get a rate law expression to be this. Well, all right, and just take a look. I got NOBR with a 1, so NOBR to the first power. NO with a 1 in front of it, so NO to the first power. But there's a problem. The problem is that NOBR2 is an intermediate. It's, it isn't one of our starting reactants, and we have no way of knowing what its concentration is precisely. It's made, and then it's used up. Right, so it's an intermediate, it can't be in our rate law expression. So what are we gonna do? We can't have an intermediates in our rate law expression. Well, here's what you're gonna do, all right? So you're gonna take a look. Hey, I know the concentration NOBR2 is coming from this first step. It's an intermediate, it's being made in this first step. And I know by this double arrow that it's in equilibrium, meaning that the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So why don't I take a look at the rate laws for those processes? Well, I know the first step, there, yeah, that's what I said. So the forward reaction rate law is going to be this. So I get NO times BR, both to the first power because the coefficient is the 1. And the reverse reaction is going to be equal to uh, K to the minus 1 because it's the reverse 
the concentration NOBR to the first power because it has concentration one. And I just, I know because of that double arrow that it's an equilibrium. So I know that these two rates are equal to each other. They are the same rate. So I set them equal to each other. And now I can go, hey, NO and BR2 are my reactants. I can solve for what NOBR2 is in terms of those things. So now I got to do a little rearranging and solve for the concentration of NOBR2. So I got the concentration of NOBR2 is equal to K1 divided by K to the minus 1 times NO times BR2. So now I can just substitute this in to my original, my starting point rate law expression. And I get, all right, I got all these Ks. I got K2 times K1 divided by K to the negative 1. But here's the thing. All those Ks are just numbers. They're constants for those processes. So because they're just numbers, we can treat it as just one thing. And that's going to be K. Once you know, it's going to be K. So now we get a rate law expression being rate equals k times no squared because i had an no here and an no there so combine those it's the second power times br2 and those are my reactants i no longer have an intermediate in my expression i'm good to go so why don't you try it here i dare you all right overall reaction is given as follows here's a proposed mechanism the slow step is the second step so again my initial reaction or rate law is going to be K times, well, this is a slow one, so I look, it's going to be the concentration of N2O2 to the first power times H2 to the first power. But here's the problem. N2O2 is an intermediate. H2 isn't. It shows up as a reactant, so I'm okay with H2, but i got to figure out how am I going to get rid of this N2O2. So again, I know this first step, NO plus NO, is an equilibrium with making N2O2. So I know the rate is going to equal K times NO squared because it's NO times NO. But that's also going to equal K of the reverse process times N2O2. So now let me solve for N2O2 by getting it by itself. K to the minus 1. So I get N2O2 concentration is going to equal that K1 divided by K to the minus 1 times NO squared. So now I can substitute this in to this expression. So I'm going to end up getting rate equals K times NO squared times H2. Now remember this is technically K times K1 over K minus 1, but because these are all just numbers, it's just a K, it's the constant, right? So there you go. That's how you do that. So summarize. Determine the rate law for reaction mechanisms with slow first elementary steps, and then also do the same for ones with fast first elementary steps. So uh, yeah, hope you found that helpful. Okay, bye.